It is arguably the most famous election in the world, and with the responsibility of hundreds of millions of people at stake, it is no surprise. But what actually happens still remains a mystery to this day, as the College of Cardinals assemble at the Vatican for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and duty to decide the future of the Catholic Church. So when director Edward Berger assembled an all-star cast to interpret the defining practice of the Catholic Church, it was certainly going to be a gripping depiction of how a new Pope is selected and elected in the conclave. The Pope is dead. The throne is vacant. What happened? They say a heart attack. You know how rumor spreads and one and a quarter billion souls watching. Well thought, no, Lawrence. It seems the responsibility for the conclave falls upon you. The adaptation of the best-selling book by Robert Harris about the election of a new pope would take a director who is an excellent audiovisual storyteller. And that is exactly what it got as Edward Berger stepped into the director's chair, fresh from his Oscar-winning success with his wartime epic, All Quiet on the Western Front. Thank you so much um, from Arise Play Nigeria. Um, your, this, your Oscar-winning film, All Quiet on the Western Front, was adapted from a best-selling book, and now Conclave is also adapted from a best-selling book. So as a creative and a filmmaker, would you say you are inspired more by working from established source material or you prefer creating completely original works? No, that really depends on the movie. Sometimes completely original work is fantastic. The realities of the filmmaking business is that a lot of times the financiers prefer something that has been written before, yeah. something they can hang their hat on and that they know, oh, this has been a bestseller or this is a book that people have read or title one recognizes cross you know cross marketing books and movies and those so those movies are very hard to make if if like if you have a an original screenplay it's really hard it's a bit high hurdle to to it better be very good <laughs> um one thing i really enjoyed about this film that you also did in um western front is you have a great way of audio visually playing between the greater landscape and the isolated individuals within it and so the audience begins to understand the significance and greater ramifications of every choice they make because you constantly see them in the broader like environment they're in so whether it's the war on the battlefront or it's the conclave the vatican and I just wondered that, is that something that just evolves organically as you make a film? Or is that a signature of your filmmaking style? I love that you recognize that. <laughs> I mean, I guess I just feel that way, you know, that we're part of a, you know, that we're tiny people in a big world, you know, and that we're actually quite insignificant and that we feel that. And so to represent that, you know, our emotionality is obviously on our face, but also to have tiny people in vast rooms on top of it. That's how the Catholic church is built. Yeah. Uh, you know, that it's supposed to make you feel insignificant in a, in a big, in, in God's universe. So that's part of it. But I guess it's really a, it, it's instinct, you know, it's not something I think it's, it's almost instinctual because it comes from inside, but I would say it represents of how I feel in the world, pretty small, you know, and, and, and so, so that that finds its way into the images. The supervision of this election is a duty I never thought I'd have to perform. They are sequestered and they must be shielded from all news that may influence their judgment. You understand? No sane man would want the claim to see. The men who are dangerous are the ones who do want it. That sounds ominous. In a world dominated by men singularly focused on vying for one of the most powerful positions in the world, the image of a singular female who radiates a silent authority is impossible to ignore. And that is the character of Sister Agnes in this film. 
played with the inimitable screen presence of veteran actress Isabella Rossellini, who herself grew up in Rome and was no stranger to the ever-looming presence of the Vatican and its practices. Um, this film is built on men and the conversations between them, the politicizing amongst them. And your character of Sister Agnes is this sole female figure who says very little. But then from the way she's sh the film is shot, Edward always presents her almost with like this photographic arresting quality. So the audience always knows, OK, something's going to happen with her. But then when's it going to happen? Something's going to happen. <laughs> So did you know straight away that even though this character that's been given to me says very little, she's going to make an impact on screen? Well, I, I read the script, so I knew I, I was, of course. But I also understood by the way it was written and also by discussion with the director and the writer that <coughs> I wasn't given much dialogue, but I still had to have a very strong presence with great authority throughout the film, even if my authority wasn't going to be expressed in words or yelling or commanding, it has to be silent. Still, it had to come across. So I was very aware of it. Uh, and I thought it was a challenge because most of the time, uh, people that are stoic and have authority show that with words and not in silence. So I thought that was interesting to play that. I wonder if I could have a word in private. You look anxious. Everything under control. How has this been kept a secret for so long? You will never find a candidate who doesn't have any kind of black mark against them. Although we sisters are supposed to be invisible, God has nevertheless given us eyes and ears. You should be careful, Thomas. This is a conclave, Aldo. It's not a war. It is a war. And you have to commit to a side. Um, we touched on this a bit in the round table, but I'd like to kind of unpack it further, which is the character of Cardinal Adeyemi, who is a Nigerian cardinal and becomes a contender to become Pope. And it's coming out this weekend in the UK, so I don't want to put, it, put out any spoilers, but his story is strikes at the heart of conversations that happen, particularly for Black Catholics, but lots more so in Nigeria, I would say, from my vantage point, which is that if God moves the hearts and minds of the conclave to choose his choice, why is God's choice never a Black Pope? But because of the way Nigerians are Catholic, they love the faith so much, they'd never challenge the church. But you're an artist and you're given this avenue and this weapon to force conversations to be had that people feel they're powerless to have. So when you make a film like Conclave, are you mindful that I have the instruments to do something that others need but could never ask for? Um, yeah, I mostly make it from my stomach, but I want to contribute to the general discourse and I want to uh, mirror what's going on in the world you know, and and not make a movie in a bubble. There's nothing to do with what's going on right now. So it is it is um, it, it is I am mindful that I have a voice that others don't and I want to don't have and I want to contribute to the conversation and ideally push the conversation forward and not like stay in the status quo. But challenge the status quo and have us start thinking about other avenues and have other people who are not have, don't have the privilege to make movies who are, you know work in a i don't know in a in a in a in a grocery store or so to to sort of have those thoughts and talk with their friends about it and and exchange new ideas yeah um the cast of this film is like a heavyweight title fight of acting talent so from Ray Fiennes to John Lithgow, Stanley Tucci, Isabella Rossellini. And then you decide that you're going to cast a near unknown actor for one of the most pivotal roles of Cardinal Benitez. With your responsibility as the director, did you ever stop and think that no matter how great the audition is and how perfect he is for the role, he might get to the set and being surrounded by iconic veterans, it would just make him turtle shell and withdraw from showing the talents you saw in the audition room. 
Well, yeah, I mean, you you obviously you never know until everyone is. But there is a feeling you develop for other humans. You know, he comes in, seems to have confidence. You know, it's also on, on the audition. He's not all confident. He's obviously nervous because he's meeting strangers. He has to perform for us. He's basically bear himself, you know, like make himself vulnerable for us. And that's a very difficult thing to do. So if you get to do that in front of a casting director and a director and a producer in a in some kind of office room, yeah, that has no atmosphere, and then you have got done a lot. And then you have, you know, I like to work with generous people yeah. and you get a feeling for Rafe when you meet him or for Stanley or for Lucien or for all these Isabella for all these wonderful actors and you know that you 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 hope that they will be generous and my hope were my hopes were absolutely rewarded because they are super generous you know they're just very kind and open people who are there to support the newcomer and not try to sort of squash any talent that might be in that person while the job of Edward Berger's new discovery, Carlos Diaz, to play opposite a cast of movie greats was a challenge, seasoned actress Isabella Rossellini was also faced with her own challenge, the task of being in a film with fewer lines to say, but a big impact to make. Um, for me, watching Sister Agnes in the film, I kept thinking, I know it sounds strange, but I kept thinking about the fates in Greek mythology because the fates are always aware of everything. They know everything, but it's not until a character confronts them and they speak, they set up a chain of events that changes their lives always in whenever you read about them. So that kind of approach for you as, an, an, as a creative, is it exciting, is it fun or is it frustrating to have a character that's almost drip fed to the audience like a breadcrumb trail as opposed yeah, to being graduated? Exciting. To me, it was very exciting and new. I've never played that. I've never yeah. played somebody where there's such an authority, but I had no way to express it in the traditional ways that was screaming, yelling, pounding your your part, you know, your fist on the table. Um, it was, you know, it was in silence. So it was, and as you said, it was breadcrumbs. And I've noticed that. And there was one scene in particular that I remember the how brilliant I thought Edward is. Uh, it, the camera was very far from us and there was these two group of people, the nuns and the priest and the nuns are dressed in dark blue and the priest in red and the cardinal in red. And by the way we moved like dots, he established a hierarchy. We were the nuns, blue dots, walking very fast across the frame, probably going to the kitchen. And the, and the cardinals were breaking up in small groups, talking to one another. And just that image of dots moving with different colors, and we identify who they were, established the patriarchy uh, of the Catholic Church. And so I thought that, that the director was not only brilliant with the actors, but he was like a painter who could tell visually the, so much. And when he photographed me, even in the bus, when the nuns are arriving in the bus and you see all the movement of people gathering the Vatican because now they have to gather, it does a close up of me. And that close up suggests, hmm, who is yeah. she? And, and, and Edward also said that it was important to have me uh, or an actress that was known or some people will know the face because then they say, well, something she might, something will happen with her. So he used uh, the fact that some of the audience would recognize me to anticipate, is she going to say something? As well as he wanted to have Carlos, who played the Pope, to be somebody unknown because he wanted to have the audience have the same experience that the Cardinal had of a Cardinal coming in an impactor, meaning that the Pope elected him a cardinal, but he didn't know the other no, because he was in Kabul, and in Kabul, uh, being, he could have been killed, and so it was secretive to protect him. And so he didn't want uh, Brad Pitt or somebody very <laughs> known to play that role, uh, yeah. because uh, you, you, you couldn't, as the audience, couldn't anticipate. So if you want, Edward made the opposite uh, choice with me, a face. Uh, uh, that might have been known by some of the audience and with Carlos that nobody knew him. I mean, it's just been brilliant talking to you. I have to say that 
I studied your parents' films to get my degree. So it is so amazing to talk to you. Thank you so much. And I can't wait for us to see the film. Thank you. Conclave has an exceptional cast of actors that takes the audience on a theological journey that asks questions about how power is given and who it is given to and where individuals place in the grander scheme of things that are beyond their control. It also poses a very important religious question on whether, even with faith, doubt can be a strength rather than a failing. Um, one thing that stood out for me with Ray Fiennes' character is how he brings out the storyline of how important doubt is to your faith. And having grown up Catholic myself, it's almost something that is seen as a point of shame, that it's when you doubt that you should believe more than ever, that shows you to be a good Catholic. So did you consciously say, let's actually talk about the humanity of a Catholic, which is part of what makes them great, as opposed to make it seem like it's a fault or a failing? I think it's um, it was almost the most important element of the movie, this character trait of doubt. Because, you know, we're way too, or there's too many people too certain of their opinions these days, you know, and and that doesn't allow discussion. You know? and it just says, no, this is the way it is, and we're all supposed to follow. And I think if you voice doubt, that always invites a, a discourse, a discussion, uh, someone there to help you, someone there to give advice, someone there to refute you, whatever it is, you know, but it is a discussion. And I think it's so important to to have that and to allow doubt in whatever opinion you have, because because it makes you stay open, yeah. You know? And so, and for any any belief, whether Catholic or Protestant or Jewish or or Muslim or Buddhist, it doesn't really matter. Or any political opinion, I would say that's what Rave stands for. And I feel doubt every single day, and it makes me ever since I embraced it, it makes me so much lighter you know and and it makes and i think it the you know if you're feeling doubt in your faith or in your political opinion i think it's a good thing because it it'll be you know it it gives you a chance to check to check your opinion and to to make sure that you're still believing it and you're still on the right path on the path that is good for you and maybe next year you will change it because there's a new influence in your life, but at least makes you stay open. Well, Mr. Berger, thank you so much for making time to talk to us. I'm so excited about this film coming out this weekend, and I know that Nigerians will absolutely love it. I've said it to you before, but I can't sing my praises loud enough. Thank you so much. There is one sin which I have come to fear above all others, certainty. If there was only certainty and no doubt, there would be no mystery. And therefore no need for faith.